Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jeep Journals. Today is Wednesday and I used to call it Wild Wednesday and I'm actually out at a, a wilderness area. And so let's go ahead and call this one a Happy Wild Wednesday episode. And the first thing I wanna do is give thanks for the fact that we're here. Um, I wanna give thanks to our creator and I hope that you're giving thanks with me and understanding that we're here together, learning what we're learning together, sometimes in the absence of our fathers. And you can take that however you want, but I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to easily accept defeat when somebody keeps trying to, when anybody tries to take away what I've been able to do and downplay it in any way that's basically almost derogatory. And so for that reason, some of us have had conversations that are quite enlightening and we've begun to explore the possibilities that maybe we're looking into ourselves when we look at one another. And if we're looking at one another as if it's ourselves, then we naturally would treat other people the way that we would want to be treated. And we also would see when somebody is ailing and we do our best to nurture that aspect of their life back into shape. So what then when you attempt to nurture somebody close and that, that effort is rebutted or refuted or recoiled at or worse yet the person lashes out and strikes at you for the things that you're trying to do to assist them now we've all encountered situations where we've met wild animals each each animal with its own personalities and traits and we've basically come to recognize that hey almost everything that we don't know is wild you know, anything that we walk up to can be wild. So earlier today, I came upon two deer on the trail and I talked with it as if it was my own pet, just like I've done with an injured bull snake, just like I've done with the birds that crash into uh, whatever they crash into in the backyard or when I'm out and about. I'll pick up the things that are in need of assistance if I'm able to provide that assistance. There are a lot of cases where we might doubt our capabilities in terms of nurturing one another, but right here on this channel, I know for a fact that someone's being nurtured by hearing me talk about these topics in very open ways that allow us to contemplate. Did you see that sign, that confirmation? I think it was a butterfly. Sometimes since I'm looking at this screen, I'm really looking at the viewfinder and, um, and I see movements you know that tell me that i'm still recording which is quite helpful because in the past i've run into situations have you ever done that youtubers where you're recording something and then you come around to the capture device and go oh the batteries died like the first minute i started this hour long long segment um i'm sure that's happened to you because technology has a way of creating imagery <laughs> that we can all appreciate we can all appreciate the concept about wild animals, the things flying around me, finding things on the trails. We can, we can all wrap our heads around the concept of treasure, rewards, um, praise. And I've got to say that I've run into a lot of circumstances right now where people will immediately tell me why my picture is wrong, why I need to change what's on the side of my screen, but they'll never ever contemplate what's happening on their side of the screen. Recently, I saw a lot of discussion about the celebrity comic who was talking about one acronym or another. And in that segment, the interesting thing is that the person with examples that helped people to laugh, with examples of humor, maybe not the possibly also not the least uncouth humor it's just you know it's, it's it's humor everyone deals with things in different ways 
And in our accepted social circumstances, we can either tolerate someone making a joke in our circle of friends or we can not tolerate it. And the more that we are victimized to overlook any segment, whether it's got an acronym or not, and even more so any past segment that doesn't have the same following as any current segment. And as we continue to overlook even the basic differences between ourselves, you know, what if someone looking at this screen is saying that I wasn't born in the right nation and so I'm definitely not going to the afterlife that they have been told they would be rewarded with. In all of these cases, we are taking on the ownership of judgment. And in most spiritual teachings, it's a safe bet to understand that we're not the judge. And the easiest way to move on th with things is to just basically maybe overlook certain things, forgive them for they know not what they do. There is a point, however, when certain things begin to fall apart because we're not maintaining them properly. And as I walk through these wooded areas, these wilderness areas, and see fewer and fewer deer, you know, today, today was a rare treat. I rarely see the deer, but for the past two trips out here, I've seen the deer. And as I encounter these animals and talk with them as if they're people, as if they're people that I have consideration and compassion for, then basically they seem to respond the same way that my own pet does when I ask it questions that are giving it some level of praise as well. You know, the wagging tails, the up ears, the, you know, the happy things, the happy things that happen when we praise one another. These type of things are becoming less and less frequent. And, and I'm telling you that it might sound funny to some that I talked about getting kicked out of the Metallica club for um, basically sharing a song. Uh, and at the same time, I almost regret even saying their name out loud, not because it's, it's bringing an observation to light, which is theoretically tied with a whole group, a group that I admire, a group that I should be able to participate with, a group that basically helped me to make a decision to leave the social media platforms as much as possible. This is the only channel I have. I have my websites, and I may share occasional information there, but lately I haven't. I've just used this platform because this platform pretty much has it all right now. And if someone were to pull the plug on it, it wouldn't really interrupt my day. It would only interrupt your day because you're looking for knowledge, which is why you're on this page right now. And in a lot of ways, when I say it wouldn't interrupt my day, it's because I'm out here and I can tell you for a fact that even though you can find plenty of knowledge on this type of channel, you can find way more knowledge in the outside world, especially if you're looking to the things that satisfy you. So if I like music, well, you know, Metallica is just one band. They're not, <laughs> they're not even the one that I watch all the time, you know, and that's just the way it is. I might have the most t-shirts from that band because I've gone to the most live shows because I believe that they put on an amazing live show. And if you've never seen someone akin to a rock band who has at least some reasonable and responsible thoughts, maybe you should look at the lyrics for the songs of Metallica before judging what you heard coming out of the radio. You know, the packaging is basically just part of the imminent delivery system. And certain things are delivered in a way that they're either appealing to us or repulsive to us. And at some points we decide to excuse one another out of, out of the picture, whether it's deer or a snake, we might have a different experience when we see one or the other suddenly, especially if it's approaching us. And you know, that shifts dynamically depending on your point of view. Are you a hunter? Are you a, are you a predator or a prey animal? And better yet, do you expect violence and, and fear from every single thing that comes your way? It's a very humid day. I'm sweating and, and it's like the sun is magnifying the light into my already almost overwhelmed eyes. But I'm going to continue recording 
to let you know that recently I've run into many circumstances where people have dismissed me out of the conversation without ever even had it, having a conversation with me. And for that reason, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to do except for to share here what I'm seeing as a trend, which is from half a mile away to a quarter mile away, I can hear people talking on the trails about how they, you know, we don't want to go someplace looking some way. There's people that are suffering right now. There's, you know, yes, we're, we're all right about that. And I don't mean we're all right about that. What I mean is we're all correct in all of the thoughts that we have when we think about all the woes that are out there. And the main reason we feel those pressures that build up to this thing called anxiety is because we may not be doing something about those woes. And if we're not doing something that's in our nature to observe, if we're not doing something to safeguard that which is in our nature to observe, be it beautiful instruments, um, trails, you know, where people discard rubbish onto them for whatever reason, uh, the rule signs that are on the trails, if it says no pets, you know, no pets. People collectively in the right group, in the right circumstances, especially based on the observation of the comic who was talking about a certain entitled type of, of persona, will try to collectively go, well, you know, that's this rule applies, but it doesn't apply right now. Let's go ahead and, and take our, our pet on the trail. You know, take your pet on the trail. No one's looking. When it comes down to it, we either follow the rules or we don't. And the main number one reason that we recognize one another is because sometimes we're all not following the rules. I mean, even today, for as a matter of fact, I know that I might have ex exceeded the posted speed limit, you know? There are many things that happen where we basically juggle words and where we can create illusions. And the question starts to become kind of tricky because we start wondering, is whatever we're doing for the purpose of good or is it self-serving? Well, I can tell you when someone forgets to look into their own psyche about what makes, is, what makes them anxious, they continue to remain in a fear and anger based gridlock where we can continue to leverage assault towards one another even if that person's just hanging on for dear life for themselves still people will assault and pummel the person in their ears in the, you know in their hearts on their arms trying to do whatever they want to to introduce chaos and destruction to the world now so far as I've ever heard, there's one particular segment or entity that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And it doesn't often give thanks for very much, let alone the day that it wakes up to. If it's there to kill, steal, and destroy, it certainly can't be thankful for any of the things that it's presented with. For me, I have a butterfly that's been here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but... When it starts fluttering around again, I'll go ahead and it's vibrating its wings. It's sitting on a rock. I've been watching this here, here. Maybe it's watching me the same way that you're watching me. Maybe we're all collectively going to see each other's storyline play out, whether it's on this tube or some other tube. Whatever the case, as we see one another, and as I encounter even the hostile energy, I recognize that we are a redistribution center of energy. And so if someone meets me with anger and hostility and angst and anxiety, I get to absorb that and redistribute that energy into some other energy. And whether it's additional anxiety magnified or whether it's just absolute persistence and success magnified, that comes down to how I respond to the things that I'm dealt with, that, that, I, that are dealt to me. And so if I'm responding 
from a place of fear and angst then the buzzing noise of the thing that flew overhead and crashed into the tree next to me might have caused me to you know kind of shrink shrink away from the noise possibly catching my foot on the root that was in front of me tripping and falling if i were to constantly get anxious and frustrated and angry at the jets flying overhead i'd never enjoy the flowers or the butterfly that's right next to me i mean i i think it just didn't want to show that this was true but it was literally right next to me some of the things that I experience, I don't get to show you. Some of the things I do, look on my channel for Taming of the Shrew. It was almost like these animals gave thanks that I was there, you know, just as much as I gave thanks that they were there in the dead of winter. Here's, here's the butterfly still looking at us. Did you see it turn to show off its beautiful side? All of it's beautiful. It's turning around, showing itself off. I'm talking about this butterfly, and I'm also talking about how quiet, how silent these woods are. And I get it. Nobody wants to be told there's a bird flying. It's not just any bird. Did you see it was a vulture? Nobody wants to be told that we're in a losing situation, that maybe we're facing death. Eminent conclusion let's call it here's the butterfly look so in a very unique way i've been presented with an opportunity to oftentimes just alone tell you a story that has to do with wildlife with wellness and conservation and how they tie together and how these conversations sometimes are carried in the hearts of men and sometimes are overlooked in the hearts of women because of convenience-based factors. You know, for convenience-based factors, we can choose to go out into public wearing what we want to impress others, or we can choose what we wanted to impress ourselves with. And when we impress ourselves first, we oftentimes have a way more joyous outcome. And the things that impress us, again, if music is something that impresses me, then I need to do my duty to absolutely expose myself to that which brings me joy. And so I think a lot of us have lived in such a way where we forget how to be happy because we never were really happy to begin with. And we don't recognize the difference between happiness and unhappy until we start having fuller and fuller conversations that don't just have to do with topical subject material like the weather you know although the weather is a very important subject it's not just a, a, a passing subject anymore <laughs> the weather what about all this climate challenge what about all this global warning it's a warning to all to think about certain things and some of us may not be able to withstand certain things if our hearts are already racing with panic and fear to begin with so even these butterflies are attracted to calm peaceful energy and when you bring about calm peaceful energy into a darkened room it's pretty amazing what can happen it's the same reason that you're listening you're still listening going this is interesting you know i never thought about it this way what we don't also think about quite frequently is duality. And when I say duality, what I mean is, you know, here I am telling you, I got kicked off of a rock band's fan club site. My group, I got kicked out of my group. I might very well have been one of the original founders. Did you see that, this butterfly? I mean, it just, it just keeps coming up to investigate. I might have been, and I don't mean like I'm, you know, what I'm saying is from the moment that I heard the amazing guitar work, the amazing songs, just the energy from the moment I felt that energy, I understood someone knew what I was talking about, overcoming adversity, despair, um, anger. Who can that not resonate with, especially in today's world? So if you'd like to see me angry, I recorded another clip that I uploaded and then deleted because it, it showed a little bit of a, an outburst 
if you will. And let me know. I'll post it. I'll share it. I'll let you analyze it to understand how I am met with the same things that everyone else is met with. Same adversities. And I can respond in the same childish ways, just like anyone else. The thing is that what we feed becomes stronger. And if we continue to eat sugary things, imagine all the holidays we're coming up on right now. And by holidays, I mean for some people. Imagine all of these ritualistic dates that we're coming up on where we celebrate without actually talking with one another about anything more than topical conversations about things that we may not even benefit from that we ourselves are serving. So when we think about what we're bringing money to and how much we're withholding from one another, then we can also quite quite frequently come to the conclusion that, hey, we can change the entire world if we just changed our tune. So one of the struggles I think that I presented myself with early on was telling you I'm not doing this for an income. I'm not doing this for money. I've, I've said that. And at the same time, in today's world, it takes energy to make energy. It takes, takes some to spend some. <laughs> so at the end of this segment, I'm going to link to a song. It's, uh, it's, you know, I think it's good. I think a lot of these new songs are really great, actually. And there was one that I wrote yesterday where I just knew, I was like, oh man, I hit the mark. And it tells a story that really covers the emotions that I've been feeling, which are very similar to what this comic was talking about when he says, hey, what I'm, what I'm saying in my comedy, what I'm saying by using sarcasm, and what I'm saying by telling you the truth without sarcasm or masking it in comedy is that this comic is right. There are certain segments that we overlook to the point where murder is not a big deal among that segment towards another segment in particular. And yet, even just saying something that might have been said in jest, in, in maybe in a, a way to open eyes, to hear something different, to go, hey, well, you know, I, I never thought about it that way. Yeah, these, these uh, one acronym has it worse than the other acronym. But really, the truth is, what we're all trying to do is blend in. And I remember using the term sheeple one time in a public forum and someone just got angry at it. And I said, I, don't get angry at it. I'm not calling you a sheeple. I'm saying that we are being led in droves, herd, herded to make the same decisions over and over. And that's what causes our collective capabilities to qualify or disqualify someone and their attempts to have conversation. That's the same thing that basically was what happened when Sojourner Truth, when you, if you look up the history of it, just like the comic said, uh, it's it's something that happened during the, during another era, which is really the same era that we're living in right now. And by that, what I mean is, if we if we know better, we are immediately able to do better. If we know better that deer can respond to positive conversation, if we know better that snakes can respond better to positive conversation, if we know better that plants can respond better to positive communication. If we know better that one another can respond better to positive communication, then why are we immediately yelling at one another when we see one another? Is it because of the veil of social media? Is it because of who appears stronger collectively when you're finding yourselves in groups? Which may or may not defend one another the same way that we think when true fear and true angst and true assault is leveraged against it. Some things may respond differently. You can watch all of the movies, whether they're terror movies or otherwise, and you can see over and over there's a pattern. There's a repeating pattern of, hey, there's someone in, this, in the system who's either a traitor, you know, who's a coward, who's a... Um, defender of the right 
and you can see over and over there's always a fall guy and in this whole group there are expertise that goes beyond expertise that allows for certain things to happen at the last moment as if by some wonderful miracle as if like a butterfly flying around showing showing you that you know hey this guy you know he's saying a message I, he resonates I, I love nature i watch nature and i've seen what's flown by while he's been talking but i also hear how quiet it is where's where are the birds chirping People might be in a false sense of security because in our residential areas, there are people feeding birds. There are requirements for keeping the, the lawn looking a certain way. And if the lawn is always gonna be looking a certain way, there are differences between what happens with water in one area versus another. And if people are feeding animals in these residential areas, which is not a bad thing, I don't think, I think it's looking out for that which we're here to be steward of, then of course we're gonna see those things in the residential areas quite often. In this particular wilderness area, I think that if someone brought their pet here, I might have more likelihood of seeing wildlife. If I didn't count the people that I see as wildlife, I might sometimes never see wildlife. And also, I've been recently blessed to have seen two beautiful deer on the past two occasions that I've been here. You've seen many snake encounters that I've shared with you, which I think have been fantastic. Eye-opening for what I can see and sometimes I'm not paying attention to. And all in all, I'm trying to bring you the best of what I see every day because you deserve the best. I mean, I deserve the best. <laughs> and if I believe that, I want to treat you to the best. And to treat you to the best, I mean, you know, sometimes even if it's presented sadly, if it's, it's, if it's from a place of despair or sadness, maybe that's easier to, to consume than if it's coming from a place of anger. And so you've, you've heard a lot of anger or anxiety that came out of me. I basically spelled it out into existence with my music. And that was, as some other famous musician said, that was like a release. It's a salvation. It's the thing that got me through some of the things that I ran into because I was able to share these thoughts and some people some angels in my life were able to hear what I was sharing. You know, it wasn't just something that they heard and said, oh, this is cute. You know, this is, this is, it's not really worth my time to, to hear over and over, but it's cute. So at the end of this song, turning back the, the concept to monetization, what I'd like to do is share one song. And I'll try to constantly up, update this to the song that I think still is the most relevant and the most powerful and also the most soothing. And I'll do that at the very end of this segment, you'll have something you can click on. And when you click on it, if you hear the song and like it, I'm gonna also make sure that the donation link is in there that says, hey, if you liked this song, why not throw me a buck, you know? I'm trying to turn a buck here, and I'm trying to turn a lot of bucks and does into basically aware beings by providing and presenting information that I think is insightful. If we cannot look far enough to recognize one another and say, hey, you know what? This is valuable. And that was work, what happened. That was quite a journey, the things that were brought to our attention. And that did take money. And if there's no sponsorship, well, you know, it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm treating someone like as if uh, you guys might think that I'm a charity case. And that I say that specifically with the intent to cover what I was told by someone in one particular instance recently with something that I purchased when I asked to negotiate the price of what was being sold. They said, what do you think we are, a charity case? And it was very um, off-putting. 
because for the for the longest time I knew in my heart that there's not really a whole lot of people that want to spend fantastic amounts on some kind of ornate instrument just because you know I know there are and I also know that there are even fewer who would purchase something like that because they want to play it and they want to actually use it to showcase to other people so that other people can get that benefit to see this thing that is frankly a magnificent beauty and I wouldn't have gone out on a limb to acquire this except for that it's almost like it was one of those things that it's it just has to be you know and there are certain things that we encounter certain people who we encounter now and again where it's like it just has to be it's it's so perfect it makes sense and in this journey using this channel I've run into many of those circumstances and in many of those circumstances it's like anyone else talks about when they talk about soulmates or um, whatever the other terms are. But basically, the the fact is that these these twin flames, and basically the fact is that these are just best friends. And and all best friends, it's it's so interesting what best friends can use to dismiss one another from each other's presence. You know, from each other's conversations. There are so many different excuses that are based on perceptions that are only perceptions that maybe we might not quite see because we might not be in the correct acronym. And when we put ourselves into the shoes of the other acronym, then sometimes we can see a perception and go, hey, they're going through this just the same way as I'm going through this, but it's for a different purpose. And if I stop thinking about fear one way and maybe look at logic the way that they're looking at logic, I won't be as afraid. I won't be as afraid if I'm walking with someone in Texas who can correctly identify the venomous snakes of Texas and we encounter a snake on the trail. I will not be as afraid if someone says, look, I know exactly what this is. You don't have to fear it. Or I, even whether or not you fear it, you know, you, you, you can respect it instead of fear it. And, and basically once we start to admire the beauty, the qualities in one another, venomous or not, because, you know, some people say uh, a tiger can't change its stripes or what have you. But when it comes down to it, we all change. We all evolve. I've, I've got my own pet. And as my dog ages, my dog basically evolves from being able to do certain things to wanting to do certain things on those days when he feels amazing enough to do those things. And the same goes for me. And when I tell you that I'm absorbing some of this health that you're bringing my way, if there are people who are going to want to talk ill content, well, I'm going to just continue to point it right back. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm turning the other cheek by doing what comes naturally and just saying, hey, you know, that's, that's it. That sounds like an opinion. And if it's just an opinion, I'm going to provide you with an observation, a true observation. Because if you're going to use judgment and try to bring ill health to myself or my family or my pet or my garden or any of that, then I want it to at least be accurate and true. And the only way that most of us can know that is if we talk in person. So when we attack from a distance and, and associate ourselves with acronyms and leverage um, lobbying in the form of clicking on buttons that really still increases the likelihood that we're gonna be sharing hostility with one another instead of uh, the alternative, which is to actually go and hang out with, with what you fear, you know, learn with someone who you can find common ground with and talk about these subjects that are meaningful instead of the memeingful things that are way less beneficial, way less nourishing, way less exciting and way less capable and delegate your energy accordingly. And remember, in this universe, energy can sometimes be termed as money. And so if you're delegating your energy to this video and you're not sharing or commenting or, or, or clicking on the thumbs up or what have you, I also encourage you to click on the description and look very closely at what I've written. And tell me it doesn't resonate with you by doing one of those aforementioned things or feel free to click on the link that says contribute, you know, donate, 
feel free to copy and paste the link that's there, click it. Uh, feel free to message me, uh, send me an email. Just remember that the type of work that I do, it is way more in person, way more hands-on and way more time consuming than you might have previously thought. Because even though this is already a half hour video, when I arrive at a place where I can upload it, it's gonna have to take all the time to transfer to the upload utility. And once it uploads, then I can begin to list it. In other words, it's still work to maintain this. It's extra, it's additional work. This is my extra credit. <laughs> and everyone knows when people are going for extra credit, then basically they either earn their points or not. So I'm either earning my points, and by points I mean if you heard a song and you heard one song and you thought, man, that was a good one, I'm gonna click on the description. I'm gonna, if I find their link, I'm gonna be able to donate a dollar because you know they're not selling anything, but I understand their cause and their plight. And once you hear the next song, consider doing the same thing. And all I'm asking for is the same consideration that you would give to anyone else when you're listening to this, because so far as you know, I am anyone else. And you're either forming a relationship where you're understanding me and wanting to hear me, or you're kind of distancing yourself because you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to fall. You don't want to fall in love. You don't want to fall for, you know, some kind of victimization. You don't want to fall for a prank. You don't want to fall for someone's schemes. There's no scheme here when I'm telling you. I'm out here, wherever I may roam, nothing else matters except for the wellness and conservation that I'm looking at. And when I look at a quiet ecosystem, and I've seen a lot of things fly by, so we're, we're having a really good day. When we look at a quiet ecosystem where things are hungry and looking for food, well, you know what? Our people are doing the same thing and they're doing the same thing for knowledge. It's why we're overeating and over consuming some other things because we're passively entertaining ourselves out of the realm of being able to hear that voice that continues to call inside of us. When we fall asleep and we're anxious, when we have these bad dreams, when we continue to not be able to feel thankful, grateful when we wake up, a lot of times that's because we basically carry anxiety from things that are incomplete. If someone asked you for help, if someone asked you, please help me talk with somebody about our fathers, you know, whether that's one meaning or another, please help me talk with someone about this. Please help me talk with the state of the environment. Please help me talk with, with someone who can help me rebuild a house. Please help me by submitting your your payment for the subscription that you've already you know known has has well gone gone well past due please help me to accomplish what i'm trying to accomplish in my life when you hear these things again we're either looking at some entity and going well i kind of i kind of can relate because i also need help but i can't help you well what we're doing is creating gridlock because if we can't help someone else, how do we expect someone else to come around and want to help us? If a dollar is too much, then, you know, see if, if there's a lesser amount that you can contribute. A penny, I'm not quite sure what the fees are on that, if it'll cost me more to redeem that than it would cost to submit a dollar or what have you. But what I can tell you is that right now, there's a gung-ho aspect about purchasing a lot of different things that are all plastic based. And I see most of that inside of this ecosphere. There are plastic lids, plastic straws, plastic wrappers, plastic band-aids, there are plastic everything. And it's just everywhere in this environment. And here we hear one of the first birds, if you can hear it. Let me see if you can hear it. It went a little further further away but it's more common for me to see currently to see plastic than it is to see genuine why is that has anyone else noticed that basically it's quiet here or is everyone running around with earbuds and music playing in their ears and not hearing these things 
Is anyone talking about these things? Does anyone look at the overall and say, hey, this might happen to me. I should care about these things. And then does the anxiety creep in or do we do something about it? Is this, is this that you're watching right now, is this meaningful at all to accomplish anything that brings us closer to solving the climate crisis? Well, the first thing that I've heard when it comes to AA and other groups like that that help us to recognize the thoughts of a higher power, the first thing that I've heard often is that if we don't recognize that there's a problem, we won't be able to address it. And in so many ways, that's the absolute truth. The easier it is for you to overlook what I'm asking for, because this is a virtual presence, the easier it is for you to overlook what you've never even heard about. And so what we do sometimes is we try to hide versions of the truth, versions of ourselves from one another. And in so doing, what we do is propagate the inaction and the stonewall heart that most of our people have towards actually discussing these things fully. So that comic who basically dropped the mic, you know, and said what he had to say, that's essentially what most people are trying to do in order to bring about the conversations that would enable one another to help someone to the next possibility of actually digging ourselves out of this pit. And in other words, basically what we're trying to do is light the way for people to open their minds and think. Now, that doesn't mean that we are independent or immune from thinking about our own selves and our own actions. Every day, I'm responsible for my own actions. And at the same time, I act as if, well, I probably will be judged by a peer, by my all my peers. And all my peers are pretty much everyone who I've ever encountered, anything that I've ever treated any specific way. And that includes basically looking at the products that I look at today for consumption. Would I want to, for an example, purchase a glue trap? If I know that this is an inhumane way of, of capturing and, and disposing of something that I have deemed a rodent based on what's been told to me so far? Do I maintain my premises in a way that minimizes the likelihood of rodents to be coming into it to begin with? Am I a true steward of what I have been given the opportunity to be steward of? Or do I burn the house down? I mean, these are all logical, possible choices. By logical, what I mean is, you know, in some circumstances that might be necessary. However, in all societies, in all eras, we have people who can help one another to accomplish what we're doing non-destructively. So how is it that we continue to destroy everything that we think might be important by simply overlooking it is, is probably what is happening in most cases, I think. Anyway sitting on this rock it's been almost 45 minutes it's not the most comfortable position uh, but it is it's a really neat little platform to rest on I actually am looking at a rock across the way and that butterfly is sitting on a rock too I think it's resting it's got its wings down and it's not moving right now so either it's completing its lifespan it's not finding what it's needing or it just is resting on a day where maybe there's not enough to go around because we're at a gridlock we're at a we're at a traffic jam where somebody is refusing to yield the right of way and i would venture to say that in almost every case, that's all of us. And if we can't make a single move to try and, and initiate conversation, then we might be the instigators of gridlock. If we can't make a single move when the other person is giving us opportunity after opportunity, well, that's like some of the parables or even the stories where someone said, you know, I, I would asked and asked for help. Lord, I asked, I prayed, I prayed for help. 
And in, in these stories I've heard it said, well, you know, I sent you this, I sent you the opportunity for that. There went a raft. You didn't take the oars and paddle with them. You know, the things that I sent you during your time of need, you didn't use them. Isn't that the case for a lot of us where we might be in need, but we have a lot of things that are unused that we ourselves don't need, that we're not willing to give up? Do we have anything that we're not willing to give up on? Do we have anyone who we're not willing to give up on? How do you continue to effectively assist someone if they're going to assault you regularly? And if you bring this to their attention, do you need to go out of your way anymore to continue to put yourself into their presence, the person who's assaulting you, I mean? I'm not going to take that from anyone. I'm not going to take it without returning the truth that comes with it. If you're going to want to try to lash out at me without actually ever having seen me in person or discussed anything with me in person, that's a cowardly way to carry out a bullyish act. And I've already covered that topic. Look up bullies and narcissists respond to conversation, I believe is what I put in there. In every case where I've uploaded something, I know that I'm not the final say-so, nor am I the judge. I'm only presenting information as it stands for examples to those who it's meaningful to. So while you're watching this video going, yeah, I, I understand, you know, I, I get it. I, I loved the butterflies. I understand your information about the ecosystem and why maybe we should consider purchasing less plastic. I understand why we should stop using plastic to purchase. I understand why we should stop purchasing plastic to give as gifts. I understand why step counters are almost one of the silliest fad items to continue to gravitate towards. None of those watches will have any bearing to the things that you actually have that had bearing your, your children, bearing your children and then your chil children's children. None of the, the fitness tracking watches will have any bearing to the next several generations, except for that it's causing us to dig a hole instead of to dig our ways out of a hole. The purchasing power that we have, the imaginary reasons that we come up with to do certain things, the ritualistic ways that we apply these continued values and logic, even down to the funda foundational level of how many times we eat per day, what we eat per day. All of these things are practices that we learned from watching you, Dad. <laughs> I bet our dads hate being blamed for all of this. They, they shouldn't be. This has happened generationally. The thing is though, that the buck stops here. Once you pull that buck out and, and try to figure out how to submit it to me, and I don't mean the knife. What I mean is the dollars. The buck stops here. This, this You're watching this, it's information. Contribute a dollar, click on the, the thumbs up, add a comment you know that the energy is right and so you want to contribute to it the reason you can't is because i'm talking about money and you're like well who is this guy he doesn't deserve anything i don't have anything i'm not asking for anything the money i have is basically to bring to you anything that i do is basically to share with you you who are watching this are my friends and family you who are not watching this are my friends and family who i just don't have the chance to know because this isn't in my line of stewardship, I guess. And at the same time, I'm in your line of stewardship. And so you're either helping to nurture me or you're helping to watch me wither away. And that's fine too, you know? I don't mind going through the whole process if that's, that's what I'm here for, you know? And that might just very well be all I'm here for. And at the same time, I also know the signs that I've been shown from the, the, whatever you want to call it, from peace, 
the signs of peace, the signs of being a light bringer, they're all signs that work in my favor. Everything that I've tried has worked out with extreme ease when it was intended for me. And then there are things that happen with increasing frequencies of difficulty. And so when you start running into this difficulty over and over, you start to try to pinpoint where it's coming from. And if it's coming from one single source, well, it's good to address that source. That way that source doesn't continue to overlook that maybe they are causing the difficulties. This is conversation. The reason we're having conversations in this manner is because some people do not want to have a full conversation. The reason we're having a conversation in this manner where you're seeing this is because someone thought it was worth knowing that we can actually communicate together instead of just argue and continue to agree to disagree. Doesn't it make you sad when somebody just stops contacting you because they are angry at you? It can, or it can make you feel like, well, hey, I've got their address. I'm gonna send them a letter, explain what I think happened and say, this is how I feel. These are my feelings. That's what they taught us in terms of how to communicate. Tell people how you feel. How I feel is that we're not getting a fair, a fair trade. We're, we're definitely not having a, an open dialogue. We're definitely not having a conversation that includes our fathers. And the reason for that is sometimes because our, our fathers refuse to hear things because they've got heart problems, you know? It's a hardening of the heart. And that also seems to be tied to hearing problems where it's selective hearing. And it's also tied to something where entire households can be divided because of a hierarchical process. Once one, some per some one person believes something, everything under the hierarchy collectively aligns to it. And these are very problematic times when we think about it, because if we truly think of pledging allegiance to any higher entity and we overlook the highest authority, and then basically we overlook doing something that is out of gratitude for that which gave us the opportunity to do these things to begin with. So I bring you this information with great humility and with great understanding that there's a responsibility to talk properly. I believe that our comic in this particular instance that I was talking about said some things that are quite controversial. And if, when we listen to things without judgment, if we listen to the whole message, the controversy was basically trying to make an opportunity for people to laugh and smile and go, yeah, you know, we, we've, we've had it this way, but wow, you, you've had it a whole other way. You know, we totally need to look at this system, review what's happening, look at the play-by-play -play in slow motion, not just so that the referees are watching, everybody should be watching, and make a better decision. And the only way we can do that, again, is if we have conversations that align to peace. When we don't have conversations that align to peace, we agree to disagree which means that there must only be two possibilities and only one can be right or only the other can be right. And in each mind, the agreement to disagree is an egocentric decision because there were probably other alternatives to agreeing to disagree, especially if that agreement to disagree led to the inability to have a conversation with one another. So if we're, again, still not talking with each other in person, because we've agreed to disagree, greed. There's probably a self-interest comfort level situation that is factoring into this convenience level uh, cessation of conversation. 
So all these words flow through me in ways where it's like, you know, all I had to do was, was give thanks, praise the higher power that is, and recognize that you either understand that we're talking about the same thing or you're still kind of getting caught up on words. Like someone said a word like meditation and then you got caught up. Someone said a word like Wiccan and you got caught up. Someone said a word like Christ and you got caught up. Someone said a word like purgatory and you got caught up. Someone said a word like, and it can go beyond words. Someone showed a picture of so and so, uh, uh, a reptile. So you had a reptile dysfunction. You know, I mean, there's so many things. Someone used comedy. So you got hung up, you know? When you yourself start to understand these things, it's usually in a time when you wanna have a conversation with that which you threw out accidentally. You mistakenly threw out that heirloom that was passed from a younger generation to an older generation. You mistakenly threw out that baby with the bath water. You mistakenly agreed to divide the baby so that both claimant parents could receive their half. You mistakenly thought that the real mother would not care, that the real mother, Mother Earth, you mistakenly thought that the real parents would not lift a finger when it came to it. You mistakenly thought that you could pluck up what wasn't yours to pluck up. So for all those who are plucking up out there, today's a new day. You can either wake up and be grateful. You can say you're thankful for the day right now. You can wait till tomorrow. You can postpone it indefinitely. And that's your choice as well. The happier version of life, the happier trails where the deer hang out with you, where the butterflies fly to you, where your favorite people meet you on the trails in time, the happiest times you'll ever have are when you're happy. And when you're happy and you know it, you clap your hands. <laughs> so I'm extremely happy. I've put in a good walk here. I'm gonna go and complete my circuit. And I'm right now looking forward to helping to guide some people, possibly several people now, um, out into the rugged remote areas in the Big Bend State Park. And I'm looking forward to that. And whether or not that's something that happens the way that it's shaping up to happen, I'm definitely going to act as if it's going to happen by continuing with my walks and my cardio, eating well, uh, might even revisit the seven day vegan challenge. I've reached out to some smart people quite a few times and I've talked with people who are really amazing at manifesting stuff. I've talked to people who even know the chosen ones. And in every case I've drawn fire that just doesn't quite make sense, except for that I'm a pretty hot topic and I've got my own light that I put off and maybe I'm just burning up the darkness around me. Not really sure. So I, I can't be sure for certain until I see how this all plays out and the ultimate judge, all of you judge me. And I think that collectively we are a superior energy who will be assimilated into the judgment process. And I either made you feel good today or I made you feel bad. But if you already felt bad, don't blame feeling bad on me. <laughs> because that would be like one acronym making another acronym feel bad because they're telling them, hey, we're, we're getting, we're getting, um, we're pretty distraught as well. And I don't know how to say it, so I'm gonna say it in a way that brings an audience. This is, this is my community here. You know, the, the Metallica fan club was my community as well. So if you want to kick me off of this community, do it. But don't forget, I'll build my own community. And all of us can do the same thing. And we can have a magnificent time on our own. We don't need other people around us. Because we will be reunited in time. And the only difference is, if we're going to really 
get to hang out then as well or not, supposedly, according to how some of the story goes. But I venture to guess that if you're happy and treating other people like you would like them to be happy as well, then you're on a you're on a good good path. And if you're challenging the um, if you're if you're what's the word if you're pushing the envelope to where you're helping someone to recognize, hey, we can we can all do this better, faster, together, peacefully. Well, that's a good thing, you know, especially when you help people to agree to learn other ways to agree instead of just agreeing to disagree. So have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace, love, and all that old school stuff.